The cloud. It's cool and it's trendy, isn't it? It's associated with cool devices and applications, and it must be all disk and even solid state out there, yeah? Meantime, tape is old and dusty, isn't it? Even though modern tape is fast, smart, and reliable, surely the two media types cannot coexist. I mean, really, there's a place for tape in the cloud? The simple truth is that cloud is just an IT resources consumption model. Well, in fact, a range of them, from who owns things, public, private, hybrid, to what service is being provided, full IT, particular applications, maybe just storage or archiving. Put another way, cloud, when it's stripped down, is just various types of IT, which can and should, to the same degree as they would in a data center, employ a storage hierarchy. So tape is just as relevant and important, indeed maybe more so, as in any other well-run IT operation. Cloud doesn't threaten or preclude tape any more than it does disk. And cloud is definitely growing, as this ESG research shows. 34% of respondents are already using software as a service to some degree, and another 42% either planning it or interested. For infrastructure as a service, 17% are already employing it, with 44% planning or interested. So, first off, let's add some detail about why you'd want tape in the cloud. I won't worry about the different cloud types and offerings, as that's not the point here, as I've already said. It'll come as no surprise that much of the answer to the question is the same as why tape has a continuing, indeed flourishing, role in IT. It provides low capex and opex cost per gigabyte, and is reliable long-term storage with great media longevity and support for multiple media types it remains the ultimate backup and, increasingly, archival device. Plus, these days it's becoming verifiable and searchable, what is often referred to as an active archive, and it's very, very scalable. To use the favoured old quote, reports of the death of tape have been much exaggerated, as I think we all really know that, and, but we only often acknowledge it in a whisper. Tape's basic advantages remain vital, even to those rarefied special case users, the uber cool apps that surely are way too cool to use it. To be specific, most people assume cloud means online, as in spinning disks. Those same people no doubt got a big surprise recently when Google went to tape to restore the mailboxes and contacts for 40,000 of its users. So even the ultimate online player still uses tape. But the value of tape in the cloud can go beyond the straightforward equivalence of regular IT. For instance, most cloud providers protect data by storing multiple copies of data via mirroring. But storing multiple copies of data in this way only protects against physical outages, like a site outage or failed disk. But logical errors, such as accidental deletions and software bugs, require another level of protection, a point-in-time copy via tape or snap. Add in the cost of power and cooling and the exabytes of data projected to be in the cloud, and keeping this all spinning can be seen to be a very expensive and poor proposition. Some other aspects make tape very cloud-friendly. For instance, users of any type of cloud service will want to know they're dealing with professionals that protect their data and manage it economically. That means tiering and that means tape. Also, such users know they're invariably sharing resources, but they don't want to share their data inappropriately. Tape is great for secure multi-tenancy via its partitioning, integrated encryption and key management capabilities. This matters a great deal since, as this research graphic shows, the number one concern with the public cloud is security and privacy. Indeed, an offline encrypted copy is the best way to protect data from malicious attack. Finally in this list, tape's sheer portability can be used for seeding an off-site location for bulk DR restores, or even as an exit strategy from a cloud provider. Let's turn for a second from the end-user view to the provider of cloud services. These providers will benefit from the way tape scales with capacity on demand. They only have to pay for capacity as they sign on new customers, avoiding the heavier upfront capex of disk systems. So, to reiterate, cloud is just a form of IT provision, 
and tape, whether it's for hierarchical, cost, security or archive reasons, is simply a part of most well-managed IT operations. It's as simple as that. And frankly, a lot of cloud data is perfect for tape. Whether it's business or personal data, much of what the cloud holds is either immediately or will become long-term, needing low cost and not so much dependency on fast retrieval. And as you can see in this graphic, the key cloud applications, CRM, email and collaboration tools, are all heavy generators of immense archival needs. So, to summarize the value of tape in and for the cloud, there are three key aspects. First, security, with such capabilities as AES 256-bit encryption and data integrity verification. Second, Tape offers a low TCO, or if you prefer, a high ROI. This is derived from its low raw cost, of course. And by the way, Tape's cost per gigabyte drops with scale, whereas disks does not to anything like the same extent. But also a single administrative resource can manage petabytes of data with Tape, and there's nothing quite so power efficient as something that's not moving unless it's needed. And thirdly, there's the scalability of tape systems that allows a capacity on demand model. So, the bottom line, big parts of what constitutes cloud really have no huge differences to other ways of supplying IT resources, which makes tape entirely relevant. And where cloud does differ in need, those needs actually mitigate in favor of tape being used.